is. I have neither the face for TV nor the voice for radio. <laughs> How do you think the podcast has gone? Yeah, I've asked a few people and they seem to like it. You know, I think that it's something that I, I noticed. I've got a brother-in-law who um, he started doing a podcast and stuff too. And his his first one, he um, he's in our elders' writing group, Dave. But um, he he implored people to get their voices out and to be heard. And he's like. I, I really I'm glad if if we're doing anything, it's getting people to talk about the freedoms that we need to defend. And that's that's what we're I mean like it's that's that's a home run. That's that's great. It's such a beautiful world. It is. I love living in a place where we can see the mountains and see the We've got the mountains skies and we've got a nice field. Beautiful blue sky today. Nice breeze. The smoke finally cleared out. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beautiful day, and we live in a beautiful area. It's so true. Now that it's not triple digits and freaking nasty desert. Yeah. People who live in the forest got it way better than we do, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's yep. some things that got better. But I think it might also get claustrophobic not being able to see. Like, seeing the mountains, it's like, man... Well, when, when I was in Mississippi training up to go on my first tour, uh -huh. there's no mountains in Mississippi. But where we were at, it was really, really heavily wooded. And that actually helped a lot. Really? Because I've found when I've been in places that don't have the mountains, mm -hmm. I miss them. Yeah. I'd imagine being in the plains, they'd be like that. Oklahoma, there were no, there were no mountains in Oklahoma. I missed them. Um, Iraq... Where I was, there weren't any mountains. Mm -hmm. um, there were mountains in Texas, though, but they kind of sucked. In Bucharest, it's, I mean, it's a big city, 5 million people. It's like you can't see, I mean, you can see a few down the street, but buildings, 10-story buildings everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, I, and you know, my grandpa always used to talk about how beautiful it was here and whatnot, and, I, you know, I grew up here. I've been here my whole life i'm like yeah you know whatever mm -hmm. you don't appreciate I, it I, I didn't see it and i didn't appreciate it because it's what i grew up around and what i'd always known and it wasn't until the last year or two that i actually you know sit here and i look around i'm like you know what it is beautiful here it really is i started maybe um, not this time of year when everything well this time of year it's getting better because it's not so hot it's not it's not so hot but <laughs> Not everything's brown and nasty and just yeah. looks like death. I mean, <laughs> look at the mountains over there. I know. You've got the green from the trees. You've got the gold from from the grass. And then you've got all the red and pinks and oranges from the trees. Yep. The corn is green and, and gold. It's just starting to get ready to and harvest. Look at, look at the leaves. Yeah, it's, we, live, we do live in not only a beautiful place, but a beautiful world. I started watching um, Little House on the Prairie with my kids, right? And there's three girls there, and with my daughters, they, they really resonated with that. And I started watching the, the first, we watched, I think, the first four seasons. First three seasons are phenomenal. And it started to get, like, uh, too dramatized. Like, too, there's always somebody about to die or always something wrong going. And, but, but just them getting out to the prairie and, and building their house and trying to, get the, 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 the weed in for before, before the heavy fr freeze or, you know, it's just mm -hmm. those, 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 those things that are important in life, but we don't have to deal with them anymore. It really kind of, my kids love the idea of, of nature, of, of going and, and just doing, being at one with earth, you know, and it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful earth. It's, there's so many things that we just need to be grateful for. Absolutely. Okay, Mitch. Tell me about this. Do we do we say, hey, we're started? Oh, we've uh, just been shooting the breeze. I breeze. don't know. I'm a hostage in this entire mess. Yeah. You invited me because I would assume everybody else said no. <laughs> well, that's not exactly true. 
but pretty close. <laughs> um, you think it, you think that you were ever picked last for everything for a reason? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't by chance. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Uh, episode four. Episode four. Welcome to episode. Hope. I'm. Oh. See, I hold two fingers because four. Four. Numbers are hard. Four. I almost left off the camera. <laughs> I don't think. It's a nat- I don't it's, think that it, would be very professional, Mitch. It's a natural. It's a natural. I just. It just does it. I, I probably didn't even hit start. Probably not. Um. Probably not. Okay. So, this is Real serious worse. business now. Welcome to episode four. The theme that we're going on this episode. Hope. Oh, it's not Star Wars. <laughs> it's not Star Wars. Um, is how to not be a slave. And um, that's kind of the, the thoughts that we've put together so far. But before we get into that, um, a message from our sponsors. We don't have sponsors, Fred. Have Nobody sponsors. likes us. We don't want sponsors. We don't want people telling us what to say. Um, tell us what you're... I want their money. <laughs> it would be <laughs> really, really cool <laughs> if somebody would send us ammo. That, sponsors with ammo. That would be amazing. I don't care about money. If you want to send me guns and ammo... Tell us about your guns, though. About your M1 Grand. What about it? Tell me about it. There's a story behind it. I want to hear. Uh, it was made at the Springfield Armory in 1953. It was in Korea. And then after um, after our forces left Korea, it stayed there. Really? Yeah. If you look at the windage knobs, they've got Asian scroll marks on there instead of a left or a right. Oh, wow. I bought well. My mom, actually, my mom and Katie bought that for me when I was home on leave for my second tour for my birthday. The stock on it was all shot and beat up and everything, so I put a new stock on it. I put, you know, I put a whole bunch of new parts and such and whatnot on it. Been slowly rebuilding it, but um, you told me that you wanted to have this week's talk, get topic about being about how to not be a slave. And I figured, well, what better piece to have in the background than the rifle that liberated the world? I like it. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that. Yeah. It's just beauty. Needs a new barrel. But I don't, I'm not willing to do that, so I'll send it to somebody else to do it. <laughs> it's not an AR or an AK or anything like that. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> a piece of history i'm not gonna do the barrel on it so one of the things i was thinking of like obviously slavery is a a hot topic everybody's got some opinion about it and everybody's got some hurt feelings that can get hurt or can get get get, um it's it's something that's that's it's very hot topic a hot topic yeah it's loaded it's loaded but when I, when, when I messaged you that, and the thing that I was thinking of is we, uh, again, it's the third episode now where I've re- mentioned this, but that free-ranged human, the idea of being a free-ranged human, that is a form of, of control, a form of, you can call it a form of slavery, where you're enslaved to so many different things. And when you look on, a script, on the scriptures and stuff. enslaved to provide money for the government. They don't care anything about you other than what money you give them. Well, that they extort from you. That they can extort from you and that you will not fight against that. But even when you talk about um, about sin, that's a spiritual death. It's a form of, of slavery. You talk about our, our actions. We There's so many different ways that we allow ourselves to be controlled or enslaved. And coming back to that topic of agency, we talk about agency being what we fought for the war in heaven about we fought for this ability to to choose and slavery is the systematic taking away of that choice and and that's that's what i don't know that's the thing that comes to my mind is like what is the things that that really um enslave you you know not you personally but (laughs) I i think uh convenience convenience is one of the biggest things 
Absolutely. Because instead of having to figure out how to do it a different way, build it yourself or, you know, do Live it that, without it. You hop in the truck and you go wherever. You go to Ace, the Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Or, you know, the grocery store. You just get the things that you need. And so there's, there. it's it's easy and it's convenient. And how how many of us could do either do without or make some other go around the convenience well even even one of the things that like think of your house we're how many people live without being hooked up to the grid not very many not very many I at wish all. I was one of them I wish I was as well but this last last few months there was a huge windstorm here in Utah two hundred thousand people lost power. It's only worth that for over a week. Yes. People lost power for over a week. And it's one of those things. It's like, uh, well, you can do so much on yourself, but then you have to wait for someone to come and free you from that. You have to wait for someone to come and fix the equipment that gives your power back to your house. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's, that is a form of free range humans. Well, how much of our, um, our commodities that we need are stored in our fridge because we don't keep them the way that our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. Like our meats, instead of drying and salting our meats, mm -hmm. we buy it. We buy it fresh. We stick it in the fridge and we, or the freezer, and we pull it out and use it. Power goes out, especially during the summer. How long is your food gonna stay good? Depending at on the kind of the freezer. At least during the summer, yeah. <laughs> and it, you know, at least during the summer, when the power goes out, you can go. Outside, you can go to the park and sit in the shade and whatnot. I mean, AC, You're not gonna while freeze I death. love AC, I love AC because I hate the heat. <laughs> you can go out and you can sit in the shade and you can, you know, you can go swim. You can do whatever during the summertime. But in the wintertime, if the power goes out, I mean, if this would have happened in the dead of January or, you know, some other cold month, February, December, whatever, I think a lot of people would have froze to death. It's because we how many people how many new construction homes do you know of that have a fireplace or a wood burning stove? A way to heat yourself without mm -hmm. that power or that natural gas or something. Or how many places have backup generators or solar? Now, if you were to take that and let's put um turmoil into it if you were to be if we were to be at war with uh if we were to be invaded or something like that some some catastrophic thing where i needed our military to be out we needed our resources to be defending our, our homes and then we lose power you have to divert resources from our own defense or from whatever whatever is needed to making sure that we have people have power again so they don't die because because we can't take care of ourselves because we can't do things without having someone do it for us it's like that's that is we've we've traded our own independence and our own freedom for that convenience and that's that's just i mean in in the industry i work in there's it's a common term called the golden handcuffs uh you work for a company that treats you so well that you it's too uncomfortable to leave and so you don't leave because it's just too uncomfortable to leave, even though you're, you, it would be in your interest to leave, even though the company does things that you don't want them to do or you, whatever, whatever the reasons are. Um, it's, we've, 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 we've chained ourselves down with lace and, and gold. And that's, that's something that we as a people, we can only, you, you, nobody can make you be free. You have to be free yourself and you have to take the, the steps to, realize that you can be okay without the convenience you can be okay without the the commodity you can be okay without the those around you and it's okay if other people think that you're weird or you're you're odd or you're off it's that's weird you personify all those things nerd <laughs> which <laughs> i i can't argue with that <laughs> we need to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable yeah 
And that's the thing is one of the biggest things about that is mostly it's scary. Most of the things that you that you most of the limits you put on yourself are in your own mind. It's like, oh, I can't do that because what? Well, why? It's like, oh, I can't I can't we can't focus on on getting an alternative source of, of energy or we can't focus on this because oh that's not what everybody else does or oh I've got you know the, 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 a lot of our limits are mental and it's there there are the resources in front of us technology there's we've never been at a time in the world where there is more technology at your fingertips that you can just use if you put the time and effort into it like you can look up and figure out how to make things that do whatever you want you can see there's there's people like mr Teslonian on youtube he's he's built like gasifiers and built like uh things it's just incredible incredible things that are like creating he 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 built this truck where it's a wood burning stove that it, not a stove it's it's called a gasifier but it creates the natural gas and he runs his truck off of this and he and it basically he has a he has the truck and the gas fire in the back and it pipes into his his engine and he and he he diverted it to run off of just gas that he's that he's generating natural gas that he's generating from burning um wood yeah they did that in poland in world war ii yeah, because here's the thing. If you don't have the other options, if you don't have a way to um, heat your home, you're going to do whatever it takes to find it. And right now we have millions of options. We just have to put forth the effort to do something that we can handle ourselves and that we can that allows us to be free ourselves. Well, um, coming to alternative heat, um, you know, other than just your furnace and, and the way that we all conventionally heat our house now, we have active agents trying to take away that ability. Yeah. Well, you can't have a wood-burning stove because it's bad for the environment. Oh, it's bad for the environment. But I'll freeze to death. I heard that. Because how our, our power grid is out of date. It's fragile. It's brittle. It, very. Uh, which was shown just a few months ago. Very, very fragile. Very brittle. They know it. We all know it, and they just keep it limping along. But eventually, it's going to catch us. So, like, when we build our new house, we have plans to do, we're hoping to do both, but we have plans to do a wood-burning cook stove and a fireplace. That's awesome. On, you know, each end, so we have the ability to heat our house if something happens mm -hmm. and hopefully they don't come down and say that we can't do those things because i'm going to do it anyway <laughs> and that's the thing is like that's the other part of being free is saying no just like uh like with the masks i just don't wear them yeah i went into walmart today oh. and they said oh excuse me sir do you have a mask nope i sure don't and i said i have a health condition <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Though I do, my lungs are kind of crappy. I can't breathe in those things. Me neither. Well, you have issues with your lungs too. Yep. But uh, <laughs> I told you, so I told you about what the urologist guy said in Romania that when they 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 did like a checkup before you get married and uh, okay this is making a lot more sense i was gonna say what does a urologist have to do with your I, th I, think, I think it was a urologist <laughs> but um they did it basically like a, a it wasn't i don't know if it was an x-ray or if it was an mri or something they did something on my lungs and on my chest and the guy was the guy the technician was there with my wife Irina, and she he's like he's like he smokes like several packs a day huh and she's like never smoked before in his life he's like really weird like, yeah <laughs> my my lungs are jacked but me too me too i got on well, my first tour i got <laughs> middle eastern respiratory syndrome and then i caught pneumonia hmm. and then on my second tour i got pneumonia twice over there and so i mean it just yeah it's like everything else my being over there has cost me a lot for not just um, emotionally and mentally, but physically as well. My legs all banged up. Luckily, my back's still good. I was shocked. But, I remember you telling me about your ankle and how you had the VA doctor 
I don't know if you want me to say this. You can say it. Okay. You had the VA doctor who had basically given you a cortisone shot, and he said, oh, there's nothing we can do about it. And for what, like two years? And then and then finally you went to a private doctor, and he's like, you've got a chipped part of your ankle that's just floating around right here. You're, this has been broken. Before he even looked at the x-ray, God. he grabbed my foot and was rolling around. He says, oh, this, is, this is broken, or has been. And then he looks at the x-ray, and he scrolls through, and he's looking at stuff. He says, oh, yeah, yep, this was broken. Six years, I walked on a broken ankle, and the VA was absolutely worthless. And that's why, like, I mean, when when people talk about wanting, you know, universal health care and all this kind of stuff, it's like, it's, it's, more, it's more of those lace chains that you want for yourself. It's just, you want that idea of protection without the actual evidence or reality to go with it. It's just the, you want to comfort your mind so that you don't have to actually think about the alternatives. Yeah. We have a rabid admirer. Hmm? We have a rabid admirer. Is there a rabbit? No, a rabid admirer. I'm confused. Over there. They drove past, then they came back, drove past again, then they pulled over there, and were all checking us out, and then they left. Oh. Perverts. <laughs> What are these guys doing behind the boulevard by those trees? What are these guys doing minding their own business? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. But so my experiences with the VA have been awful, but I hear all these arguments for, you know, universal health care. Well, some of us have lived that nightmare, and it is not very good, you know. They've ignored us, and if they're not going to take care of us after they promised us up and down, they're not going to take care of you. They're not going to care about you. Mm-hmm. See, they're back. Mm-hmm. He's, he's asking himself, do I go out and talk to him and walk out? He's, he's got something to say. Some shifty characters. Shifty characters, they're rocking back and forth. Well, we are kind of weird. Can't argue with that. <laughs> the wheels, the wheels <laughs> of progress spin very, very slowly out here. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it stays uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Um... I guess I guess the thing that I would I, I don't know the thing one of the things that really gets me wanting to do these podcasts wanting to do wanting to talk to people is the idea that we we are forgetting who we are we're forgetting as a people who we are like what what makes us who we are and that's um, that's something that it's so if you look at like the never ending story right. Mm-hmm. Never ending story. It's old car- or it's old old movie, old story. But the the enemy of the story was nothingness, and it was symbolic of forgetfulness. And the the thing that killed all of the heroes or all of the 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 world was people forgetting that the world existed. Um, these ideas that we hold so valuable, our freedoms, the the things that make us um, do what we do those ideas will be forgotten if we don't preserve them. And it's, um, it's, it's interesting. There's, there's, uh, do you care if I go into like the philosophy of science stuff? No. Okay. So there's, there's this guy that, um, he was, he's, he's considered a philosopher of science. His name's Paul Firebend and he's, he's nuts, but you take like, you take like in philosophy of science, you got like Karl Popper and you've got like, he, he was considered probably considered the modern father of, of the scientific method. He was the biggest proponent of the fi- scientific method. And he believed that the purpose of science was to find truth. Well, several of the people that have come since them have kind of diluted that into say, okay, science, the purpose of science is to actually find, to, to actually predict what's going to happen. Because you can't tell if it's truth or not. There's every every scientific theory, every scientific hypothesis. There's there's um, several different things that you have. I, mean, I think it's three off the top of my head. But you've got your your prediction, right? 
you have what you think is going what you think is causing the prediction so this is like your your what the hypothesis is is framed around you have the things that need to be true for that prediction to to be accurate and then you have unknown variables you can never know the things that you don't know well there's there's a very structured system in in science where it's like okay this is a scientific method paul firebend his his philosophy that he's come come out with is he he proposes and he advocates for a theory is always born this this idea of a theory is always born into a world that is not ready for it so it's the job of the person who creates the theory to to lie to falsify data to do anything they can to give that theory the um, leg up so that it can get at least enough traction so that people will believe it and then once it's once it's kind of in the mainstream then it's like okay then it's like okay we can we can work with this like we can we can work out the details later and and that's such a such a, a vast jump from what was originally idea, uh, created in the idea, in the field of science and you look at our our days our, our world today and you have what's going on what's called a the um, a scientific crisis where you have scientists who can't reproduce their own work because they don't um, because they the it, it just when they when they reproduce the experiments they don't have the same results and tr scientists are trying to verify other scientists results it, you there's there's several there's several documented cases where it's like we've we've taken these different studies and we've tried to reproduce them with these different studies and it's 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 like 80 percent of the studies that people source and people say oh this is how you should do things this is the the ideas that people are promoting uh, promoting or using are not actually um, reproducible on a, in a systematic way, the way that you would expect science to be. Do you know why that is? Because there's inter there's no money in in verifying your work. All the money comes from oh, we got grants to do this to get this so that you can so you can control the people. So it all comes back to this control, this idea of control. Yes, but the reason that it's so hard to replicate results. Um, because I, I worked in, I used to work in a lab, so I have a little bit of. Ex Do you have a real lab coat? No. Man, no, I can't. The lab coat that I had say. there was too small for me. <laughs> but uh, so I have a small background in in science. Uh huh. Tell me more. <laughs> anyway, the, the reason that it's so hard for them to replicate results is because the data is so easily manipulated. Yeah. You can manipulate the data, and you're your um, samples and everything to reflect what you want it to reflect if you know how. And so science has become a great, the great manipulator. One of the things that I, th I believe, and I've, I've heard it proposed and you, you tell it to someone on the call on colleges nowadays, and they'll, they'll completely be um, not just like, scandalized that you suggested it but offended that you came up with the idea but i honestly 100 percent believe that science is dependent on christianity that's funny because scientists are constantly trying to disprove god which my argument is like when you when you talk about the cosmos and um, the universe and everything they sit there and they'll say that all these things disprove god i sit there and i think i'm like well, he's God. Did you ever consider the fact that maybe he's really, really good at math? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, look, we've done this, and it's it's all... Because it seems like when it comes to um, the science of evolution, which I don't think anybody's going to argue that evolution is real. I will. Not that we came from monkeys. Like... The, no, no, no. A, a species evolve. Species do evolve. We know that that happens. Yeah, we know that there's natural selection. Yeah, there's natural selections and species will evolve. For example, um, early early humans could twist their ears and manipulate their ears like animals do to pinpoint and direct um, the for where sounds coming from. Mm -hmm. Can you move your ears? Yeah, with my fingers. Exactly. <laughs> I can't move my ears either. Um, there was another one that has something to do with one of the tendons in your wrist. I don't remember what it was. But anyway, um, so uh, evolution does happen. But that we evolved from apes, 
to say that we evolved from apes, there should be you know, plenty of archaeological evidence about um, the in-between species, which I've never really seen it. It yeah. seems like it goes straight from your parents were an ape to holy shit, Homo sapien. Well, one yeah. of the things, one of the so, things, you, 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 <laughs> one of the things about like evolutionists, and you get the extreme evolutionists who are like, they they completely reject the idea. It's called eminent design, where they, if you say that okay, God caused these transformations, and God, you know, like, uh, whether you say God, whether you say oh, s divine providence, or whatever if you give some kind of motive behind it the 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 hardcore evolutionists reject that idea and they say no it's a hundred percent random mutation and that that's and that's the if you if you statistically if you take it that and you look at the 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 differences between our dna sequence and the dna sequence of the most closely um species such as like apes and stuff like that you can say okay there's this much diff variance and so you could say okay we had this much time um throughout the history what, what we expect okay the earth's light length is what 5.6 billion or whatever we have this much time and so we need this much random mutation and the, the just the very fact that you like okay if you take the random they've taken like bacteria and seen the 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 level of how quickly it'll randomly mutate mm -hmm. and that's that's just a it's a use case but it's 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 a base place to start from and if you if you were to make that um, the if you were to take the random mutations and say, okay, we need this many mutations from this species to this species, we know we need to have at least an average mutation of this this frequency. It just it, we don't have enough time to have gone through that that random mutation and come out with who we are without some kind of eminent design, without some kind of God handling the the mutation. And that's 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 that would be my argument as far as like. It's, yeah. it's one of those things that like there's there's so many there's so many people trying so hard to to put forth evidence that like oh there's no way that we could have a god or oh there's no way and it's mm -hmm. just like no you're not going to be able to do that and it's like and i and i'm not going to be able to put forth evidence that's going to be convincing to people who say like this is proof that there's a god it's convincing to me but it's it all comes down to what evidence you require to be convinced and that's that comes down to like okay how much do you have to, like, at what point do you believe? It's, that's all it comes down to is at what point do you believe? And that's like, okay, that's a faith argument. That's not a scientific argument, you yeah. know? And it's like, it, it all comes down to, that's one of the reasons why science is so dependent on Christianity is because Christianity, it teaches and it causes, it's, it's, a, 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 it's a, a base for morality. And people, the, the reason that we have the scientific revolution is because Christian men were wanting to know how God works. And that mm -hmm. put their motive to finding, to, to find, refining science and to seeing, okay, how does this work? How does this work? And that's, that's how, that's why you look at all, a vast majority of the famous science scientists throughout history. They've all had a religious foundation that they've built from that's brought that desire to know how the world works and how God works to play. And it's like, no, it's not a hundred percent, but a vast majority. Yeah, it, it, when it comes to evolution, like we were just talking about, and and space, it seems like all the science that they, all their effort that they put into it is dis discrediting and discounting the fact that there is a God. Yeah, that's... That seems like that's where their main effort is from. It's Tower of Babel. <laughs> I actually, I read a... I read an article a few years ago and it was talking about all the all the parameters for the universe to even exist let alone for there to be intelligent life and just all these different things that the margin of error was so small so small that there's no way that it could happen by chance oh it's like I mean, even even the placements of the planets, and like if it were if we were this much closer to the sun or this much further away from the sun, that margin of error is very like so small. Yeah. But then you you have the argument of like, well, if you put monkeys in a room and they had them typing on typewriters, eventually they're going to type all of William Shakespeare's works. It's like, okay, so with that same argument, you 
if, it, if it's 100% random chance, then you know, if you go out far enough, there's going to be another world. Because it, eventually you're going to have enough chances where it's going to be another world. Oh, but if you go when out far enough... the universe enough, is infinite. Yeah, if the universe is infinite. <laughs> you go out far enough, that other world is going to have a whole world full of people that are identical to you. Oh, if you go out far enough, that whole world is going to be full of people identical to you who all have duck hats on. If you go out further enough, you know, no, if, 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 you're, if your base of, of starting point is if there's enough chance it's going to happen, you can go to, you can create any ridiculous extreme and it has to be true because if there's enough chance, it's, it's going to happen. It's like, okay, do you believe that there's a world, however distance away from us, that has billions of, of instances of you wearing polka dot pajamas with that, and you don't have a thumb? Like... Well, then your hands are worthless. But More or enough, less. enough chance, and it's going to happen. Enough chance, it's going to happen. And it's like, no, it doesn't work yeah. that way. That's, that's a, it's lazy, it's sloppy in, intellectual um, work. I agree. I agree. Well, they use, back in the earlier days of science, things that they couldn't figure out, they said it's just because that's the way that God did it. And now when they can't figure out has something happened it's because there's no god <laughs> i mean that's and they i don't know i know quite a few atheists most yeah. of them are pretty dumb like they're not very <laughs> they're not very smart individuals T to be fair yeah. most people are pretty <laughs> dumb like most <laughs> people are pretty dumb yes but but my my what us i'm trying included. like to... i'm not i'm not trying to exclude us from that we oh i'm dumb as shit <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> but anyway so most of the atheists that i know they're not particularly smart people but they'll regurgitate these things that they've heard and they'll say well facts don't lie facts don't care about your feelings and neither do <laughs> i and they parade themselves as these great scholars they're like dude i know you and i know that you were just <laughs> dumber than a box of shit <laughs> i know you you're not them <laughs> You're not any smarter than I am. <laughs> but but what I'm getting at is with athe with atheists, I don't have a problem with atheists. You don't want to believe in God. I really don't care. That's none of my business. But when you sit there and you want to ridicule me and tell me that I'm dumb for believing in God, when I know that you There's can't, so many more things you can't walk up. and breathe at the same time, <laughs> you're going to tell me that I'm stupid. <laughs> Uh, you've got an iq high enough to breathe and barely function here <laughs> there was a there's a joke about how the scientists they eventually got it to where they could Fine. take dirt and they could um they could shape it and manipulate it and create man and so they went to god and they're like hey god we we don't need you anymore we can do this like look we can take this dirt and they went to go take the dirt to create man and god's like wait wait no 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 get your own dirt Yeah, we've kind of drifted off topic. Yeah, again. I, sorry, I, I don't know. I've been thinking about. It's your fault. It, not mine. It's interesting. I work in a, I work in a, a software developer. I work with a lot of people who are very technically um, savvy. They, they've done schooling. They've done a lot of education. Some of them have done degrees in like physics and uh, chemistry and stuff like that. And, they, and then they've got into software in diff uh, through diverse means. But. Um, there's so many there's and there's so many good things about the world that that we should be learning that we I always encourage people to to learn and to grow and to to find out things but it's so dangerous to become educated in a way that we're indoctrinated and that's um I I highly highly recommend a book by um by Tom uh what is it Tom uh Thomas Kuhn Yeah I think it's Thomas Kuhn who is called the um foundation of a the what is it a scientific revolution something the foundations of a science uh the process of a scientific revolution i forget the name of it highly recommend it can't remember the name of it so good luck but <laughs> but he, he goes through type it into amazon the history of a scientific revolution i think that's what it's called um but he goes through and he talks about how science is done and he's a historian he's not like a necessarily a scientist or a philosopher of science bill but, nye's not a scientist either. bill nye's a dummy but he's a he's a propagandist but um what 
Somebody using their position for influence? <laughs> Training up the next generation in ways you want them to think? I liked it a lot better when he just did cool stuff on TV and outside of that kept his mouth shut. Have you seen his, his gender spectrum thing? No, it sounds pretty stupid though. It's amazing. You'll love it. Yeah, I'm sure I would. No. I, here's the thing. Like, Listen to people. Listen to what other people say, but don't buy into what they say without using the thing between your ears. Like you need, God gave us our brains to actually learn and to, to decide how to use our agency. I guess coming back to slavery, our brains are really the thing that our, our, our agency is the thing that really allows us freedom. That's how we can grow in our, in our, who we are is by learning how to use agency. And that's, that's the purpose of this life. Like I loved in conference, just was it two, three, three, um, uh, conferences ago, there was a guy, he, he quoted, I can't remember the exact quote, paraphrasing. He basically said he believed that this life is a time for us to join in the family business or the family kingdom or whatever, and not to just be trained how to be like dogs at the sitting at the hearth of the, of the almighty. He wants us to be heirs to his kingdom. He wants us to learn how to make decisions and learn how to grow and learn how to think and learn how to, like everything that we can learn, we should be trying to learn and seeking after the best things. But that does not mean that we believe blindly when someone tries to teach us things. Like it, it, it was interesting. There was a, there was a thing that Veritasium did just recently about the, um, about nuclear uh the nuclear tests that they did and he it was about kodak and it was about it, it, it was it was very interesting video if you um look it up but he talks about how the government um did these tests in new mexico and there was the fallout that was damaging kodak's um their their pictures and they they made an agreement the government made an agreement with these these companies that were doing the um photos the fo photographing companies because it would damage their pictures the the um was it beta particles would go and damage the the be, put spots on their film and and so they would let them know when they were going to do their um their tests but they didn't let the people know they didn't let anybody know and and they looked at the causes of cancer in those areas and they looked at like there's there's a lot of things that it affected people but we didn't know about it because we weren't privy to the knowledge. And it's like, okay, you listen to things and you pay attention, but don't invest and don't, don't believe people. That's our culture. We want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And that's very dangerous because once you give someone the benefit of the doubt, you, on a, on a personal level, it's very important because it's, that's, that's part of charity is okay. You, you think that they didn't do their best, but you know that they can do better and you give them the benefit of the doubt on a societal level that's foolish because you're letting snakes among you who are taking advantage of you, who are taking, who are harming your children, who are doing things bad to you and, and take, and then making money off of you and do, and it's just very dangerous to just trust blindly that people are good when we know that we live in a fallen world. This is, this world is, who's, who's the prince of this world? It's Satan. And, and you need to realize as Christ taught us, be wise as serpents, but innocent as doves. You deliberately have charity and show charity and don't just be like, oh, I'm charitable and so I don't think for myself. I'm charitable so I just believe everybody's going to do good. That's not how it works. You have to actually put effort into it. You have to put effort into people and to share into your relationships. And, and that's how you, you build that, that, that love for people, that, that love for individuals. I'm sorry, I'm going off. Here. <laughs> oh, boy. A little bit. Yeah. Sorry. That was that was a tangent. <laughs> uh, Are you done? Yeah, go. Do say something. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Put the soapbox away. <laughs> That's so decent of you to grab the camera to die. What? What? <laughs> What have you done?
can't find the little technical difficulties <laughs> to put up during this little spot. Oh man! <laughs> With the little in, Indian heads, you know what I'm talking about? I don't. I don't know. I, I'm still. Oh man! Well, this <laughs> Damn it! Oh. <laughs> uh, to. <laughs> you got grass stains on your pants. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you know what I say to my coworkers when they do something embarrassing? Nope. <laughs> I just I just laugh at them and say, that was a loser. Oh. I won't do that to you, though, because I respect you. <laughs> oh, <coughs> you've got a low bar. Oh, I have morals. <laughs> I have morals. They're just... Uh. Not very great. <laughs> no, I I was just gonna t- touch on something that you finished your tangent with um, about just expecting that people have your best interests in mind. Nobody has your best interests in mind. No, very few people will have your best interests in mind, and <coughs> it, I'm sorry. it comes back to um, no know, knowing your enemy. You have to be able to think like your enemy. You're gonna die. <laughs> My plan is working. God. My wife's not yeah. gonna let me come anymore. <laughs> yeah, you I'm have to know your enemy if you want to be able to effectively fight and defeat your enemy. You have to know. Your enemy. You have to know how they think. And and in a way, you have to be your enemy. I have two microphones now, but. Yeah, and now we go to an awkward edit editing part. My good lord, Fred! <laughs> Holy shit! Just puke and get it over with. Oh, I have. Man. Did you forget how to drink? <coughs> they tell you that time. <laughs> they can't hear you. <coughs> Only I'm gonna be able to hear this story. I said, they're not going to be able to hear you. Only I'm going to be able to tell this story. Okay, you talk. About talk. what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm so glad that I did this to you. This is awesome. <laughs> hey, I dropped her fluffy. Uh, talking about bad lungs, man. Yeah, <laughs> and you just inhaled a mouthful of Powerade. Straight in them suckers. There's no power in that aid. (laughs) So, back on how to not be a slave. We talked about saying no. Learning to live without. What about owning your passions? Okay. (coughs) Man, I apologize. You should. Yeah. That was embarrassing for me. I can't imagine how you feel. You know. (coughs) 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 Oh my gosh, Fred, you're ruining this podcast. This is all your fault. (laughs) All your fault. You know. I don't know what it was that, um, at what point I stopped feeling, like, bad for when I would disappoint you. (laughs) I'm surprised you ever cared about my opinion. I don't know why you would. I don't think you've ever disappointed me. But sometimes it can be hard to tell when I'm being serious (laughs) and when I'm being smart. The best thing you can do is just always... <clears throat> Assume that I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. If I'm mad, you'll know. <clears throat> That's because you'll be angry. Yes. Yes. Okay. Don't say anything while I, while I drink anymore. I gotta tell you a story. Don't drink when I'm being hilarious. <clears throat> well, uh, usually it's safe. <laughs> 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 um, my wife, she said something to me while I was drinking. Oh. <laughs> She probably won't like me telling this story. I'm going to tell it anyways. <laughs> I, I was teasing her, and I took a drink, and she's like, I hope it gets stuck in your throat, but it was a Romanian saying, and, and, I, and I started coughing, and 
<coughs> I was laughing and coughing at the same time. She cursed you. And I legit passed out. Like, I've never passed out from laughing. But, like, I was sitting at the table and I was just laughing. And then it was just like... <laughs> my, and, and I think Why didn't you do that now? That would have been awesome. Do you see when I nailed down? I did see when you nailed down. I would have taken the phone off the tripod or taken the tripod <laughs> with me. And I would have zoomed in on you. And oh, I would have mocked you. The, yeah, that's my... Um, I don't know what it is, but my lungs, when they get... I don't know if it's lungs or chest or whatever, but when I get laughing and stuff, it's it's really not good. I have to not laugh. <coughs> okay. Owning your passions. So one of the things that enslaves us is our own passions. And we talked a little bit about this, but it really is one of those things where it's like you, um, your passions are <coughs> what um, makes it so that you can... Guess who didn't push record? Are you serious? <laughs> no. Oh, man. I was, I was... Checking, I was checking the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. How are we doing on time? Uh, 52 minutes. Wow. <laughs> and about 23 of those were you hacking yourself to death. <laughs> <laughs> For real? <laughs> it's... It, uh, yes. I would appreciate it, Fred, <laughs> if you would try to <clears throat> be at least a little bit professional for once. You know. Like me. Um, I don't even know where I was going. I don't know. We're talking about passions. Basically, look at the things that you can't live without. And <clears throat> it's easy to say, like, oh, I can do anything, you know. And there's, there's a pride that comes from, like, being able to be um, free of something. But it's also, it's easy to say, like, oh, I could give up that at any time. And for me, I'm thinking of myself, like, I, where I work, a lot of times I'll have, like, a podcast or YouTube or something in the background while I'm, while I'm doing my stuff. And if I were to just cut that off and not listen for a week, I, I get the itch where it's like, what's going on? Like, what's, what's happening? What's happening in the world, you know? That's one of the passions that I have that it's like, okay, you need to be careful of those things because we're controlled through our passions. We're controlled when, <clears throat> when, when somebody offers you a product or a thing or a service. Think of like Facebook or think of like social media. There's a dopamine kick that you get. It's it, and most people, I, I assume most people know just because, you know, it's natural to think that everybody knows the things you know, but probably people don't realize this. But a few of the um, founders of Facebook, the people that helped design it, I'm not talking about Zuckerberg, I'm, I don't remember the names of them, but there was one guy in particular who, <clears throat> when, they were, when they were designing Facebook, they were designing what would cause a dopamine kick. And they found that, oh, these likes and these shares, when people did things, like, they would get a dopamine kick. And they purposely made it so that um, it, it, it releases this, this drip of dopamine. And if you don't know what dopamine is, it's a chemical that's in your brain, and it's a, it produces pleasure. It produces a, 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 re, a re, relaxation. And there's several different m motives for it. I, if I remember correctly, dopamine is the chemical that is released in, the, in a woman's brain after she has gives birth and it helps her forget the pain of the birth it helps her to um to to bond with her child <coughs> because it it releases that tension of the uh, the pain of that birth if if i remember correctly i could be getting that wrong but it, uh, do you know off the top of your head no but don't nope, i've never given birth yeah me neither but um i'm, so glad I'm, I'm still prepping <laughs> No, but um, I've seen pregnant women. I'm glad that I was not a woman because that looks awful. <laughs> <coughs> what? <coughs> what about the glow? There is no glow. There's uh, with the movies. There's lots of funny movies. But it, yes, it's one there of, are one of the uh, getting back on the soapbox. Okay, but um, oh no. <laughs> so dopamine is used to um, it, it, it. It's also an addictive ch chemical in your brain. There are things that naturally release dopamine. Um, I don't know if it's released after um, exercising, but I believe it's released after um, after giving birth. And there's there's certain times where it's it's a natural thing. But um, on a on a psychological level, 
um, that's your your brain actually releases the dopamine when when you get those um, that that feed from social media. And when they designed Facebook, they they intentionally made it like that so that um, and Facebook was one of the first to do this. Multiple most of your social media um, organizations do this now, and now they're using things like AI and stuff to uh, machine learning and stuff too to help promote that uh, uh, your your how quick how well you interact and stuff and it's it's one of those things where if you can't shut that off if you can't um step away from that for a time then that's uh that's something that controls you it you if it no longer is it, it's a common saying and it's a little cliche but if you're not paying for a product then you are the product and it's very true um ai or um Facebook is a is a data company, and they, they that's what they're harvesting is is data, and that's why it's free is because we're the product, um, and that's I mean, <clears throat> there's goods and bads. You, you just know know what's going on. Don't take things completely as like, oh, it's it, it's nice again to give that benefit of the, of the doubt and say like, oh, it's good because they're allowed to advertise. It's good because they're allowed to do this, and yeah, they make money from advertising. They make money from doing these things, but. They're really an, uh, a big data company that, that collects data and they'll sell it to whoever, whether it's an advertiser, whether it's a government, whether, whatever it is. They, they have information on us that they use. And that's something that we freely give up and it's used to control us. But I think Zuckerberg has been in so many congressional hearings and nothing has ever <clears throat> happened. Because he's useful. Because he's farming data. Yep. For yep. the feds. It, it's it's crazy to hear how, and and so in software, you <clears throat> you have people who um, truly believe that their way of thinking and their ideas are correct, and they're actively working to make sure that they're the ones that survive. They're suppressing ideas that they don't agree with, and they're. Um, they they feel they have a moral obligation to um, to fight against things that are um, outside of what they believe is as virtuous, and oftentimes things that they believe is virtuous is things like abortion, things like um, socialism, things like just things that are that are not in your interest not in your best interest and so a lot of the a lot of our our um usages become enslaving yeah <clears throat> you're still still <laughs> i feel it in my chest <clears throat> You know what I feel on my chest right now? <coughs> raging, Coal. Raging disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, is there anything else you want to go over? Owning a gun, learning to use it. Talk about that. One of the things that we I always really, talk about that. <clears throat> yeah, one of the things I really I'll bring it up again. It's worth bringing up is. One of the uh, one of the most intimidating things about getting started with being um, self protecting yourself, protecting your family, providing for your family, the the biggest thing is just getting started. Um, yeah. It doesn't. It it takes a little bit of an investment, especially if we're talking about guns. It takes a little bit of an investment, uh, a couple hundred bucks to to get something, and then every paycheck you'll want to put forth. A little bit, not a ton, but just a little bit of ammo, a little bit here, a little bit there, and slowly and steadily, you start to be able to be self-sufficient, and you start to be able to be competent in that um, in that self-protection. Um, and it's not—it's one of those things that you you don't want to. We're not encouraging people to to be violent or anything like that. We're encouraging people to to be responsible, to be um, be responsible for your family. Uh, it there's a there's that masculine thing that we talked about last time, but there's that masculine uh, responsibility of protecting your family, and that's that's on you. Um, the you kids that well, I don't know if any kids will watch this, but 
if you're if you're growing up and you're a teenager, that's what uh, that's what a, a man does is he protects his family, and he provides for his family. Make sure they have stuff to eat. Make sure they have stuff to wear. Make sure they have a home that will keep them warm in the winter, and make sure that they are not going to be hurt by someone else. And that's that's it's very basic, but that's the core. If you're not if you're not learning to do that then you're not preparing yourself to, to grow up. You're not growing up. And we've, we've lived so long without needing to grow up. That's why you have so many people that are all ages who don't know the difference between freedom and convenience is because they've never grown up. They've never needed to grow up because life has been good for us for so long. But if we don't learn how to grow up, then we're just big babies. Uh, what else is there? I we I've talked about everything. I'm sorry to take so long. I've been on a bit of soapboxes today. Uh, yep. Yeah, you had some pretty good tangents. Hmm. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you didn't die. Good job. You. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What kind of a failure is it when? You, you are all of them. <laughs> Can't drink from a bottle. We <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> talk about real quick about food storage. That's a good one. You should have, you know, enough to get you by for whatever amount of time that you specify. <clears throat> um, you can do canning. Canning is probably about the cheapest way. It's not the easiest way, but it's the cheapest way to build up your food storage. Um, but also get um, your heirloom seeds. Seeds are cheap. They don't take up much room. Um, but you need to make sure they're heirloom seeds so that you can um, harvest the seeds and replant those for the next year. And they're not as good as your GMO seeds. They don't taste as good, but they have... The, that are more nutrient dense and typically they're more nutrient dense and they're also they're they're not altered yeah <clears throat> they don't look as pretty <laughs> that's the thing is like i don't know they, I've, there's there's several things we can go into with like food and stuff um we both like food yeah you can tell <laughs> but also water there's a, a buddy of mine who is um he he was telling me about places you can get if they view there's there's oftentimes companies that will bring in water or bring in barrels that are like um, have like hydrogen peroxide or some cleaning materials or whatever and you can buy the barrels fairly cheap from them and clean them out and use them for storage water if you don't want to spend the 50 bucks or whatever it is for your gal your drums of, of water for storage but there's there's a lot of alternatives and it's just being being aware of okay what do I need and the basics you need food Water, water shelter shelter and then a way to protect protect yourself and those are the basics that you need to okay if <clears throat> if this breaks down or if this if i no longer have access to the store if i no longer have access to the water in my house the tap if i no longer have access to um, my power if i no longer have access to the police what what am i going to do to help alleviate that that need or what am i going to do to help my family take care of that need and that's that's kind of the mindset you have to be in well, and another thing is uh, a little bit can go a really long way. You hear about people getting <clears throat> stranded in the woods, you know, and they're gone, they're missing for three days and they die when a little bit of prevention and a little bit of expanding your knowledge, you would be fine indefinitely. I mean, a little bit of rope, you should always have a pocket knife with you, but... I've got, I've got, I don't know how much rope and different type of cordage and stuff in my truck, but I always have, I always have my knife. And I mean, if you have a knife, some cordage, a way to start a fire, which you, if you're going hiking, you should have all those things with you. You mm -hmm. can go a long way with just that little bit. If you know how to tie a snare, um, learning the difference between edible plants and everything. I mean, you can get stranded for months in the woods and then eventually be found and 
not be any worse for wear. Yeah. Just a little bit of knowledge, a few supplies can go a long way. And the thing is, nobody's going to force you to gain that knowledge. Nobody's going to, there, there's nothing, there's no pressure that's going to be put on your individual day-to-day -day choices to gain that knowledge until there's a need for that knowledge. And once you have that need, it's already too late. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the forest could be one of the best possible places to be lost. <clears throat> you have an abundance of material. I mean, you can, if you got your pocket knife, yeah, it's going to be hard work with just a pocket knife, but make sure you have a decent pocket knife. But you can cut down, you can cut bows off of trees and stuff like that and make yourself a little lean to and whatnot. And I mean, it's just super simple stuff that will can go a long way to save your life. That's the truth. So learn something about survival. That's your homework for the week. One of the things, I guess, we, with all of the tangents we went on today, um, <laughs> thinking of the big people in, in, in science that have found a big um, discovery or a big, they, they've, they've shaken the industry, whatever it is. Oftentimes, uh, they are people who are not trained in that field. Oftentimes, they're people who are trained in different fields, and they've just had, there's crossover. And that's one of the things about life is there's so much crossover in knowing about mechanics, knowing about um, simple engineering, knowing about uh, simple biology, or you know, knowing about wilderness survival. There's so much crossover in life that you can see things, learning some things helps you understand other things better. Same with learning languages. Everybody's heard that, oh, you learn one language and the next one's easier to learn. Or it makes you, helps you learn your, your native language better. Or, you know, I see the same thing in software. You learn, you learn these principles and these principles are seen over and over and over again under different applications and different applications and different applications. And that's how learning is and that's how life is. It's like, Learn, learn to enjoy that. Learn to enjoy the discovery of new skills and new talents because that's learning to enjoy that will help you um, find that motivation to learning how to live on your own, to learning how to survive in the wilderness, to finding out how to make your, your house have power when the, you don't have a, the, when the grid goes down or when your um, water breaks or, you know, those little things carry over in so many different ways and it helps you be it helps you to be free. It helps you to be free from the need of someone coming and protecting you and, and saving you and fixing your problems. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, we obviously have a pretty heavy focus on preparedness. Yeah. And like, like I've, we've both said through this whole thing, there's a few things that you should always have, and we've covered a few of those, but I think one of the things that, we haven't touched on that is one of the most important things you can have is good good quality footwear if you don't have a good pair of boots you need to go buy one at least one <laughs> because shoes are great shoes are more comfortable I guess they're more stylish if you care but that's what shoes are typically made for comfort style if you are looking for something that's actually built for hard use and built to support your feet the way that they need to be you need a good pair of boots i like danners a lot of people like merrells but get a good pair of boots and i don't wear them all year round but you need to have you need to have some wool in your in your toolbox as well wool base layers wool socks because your cotton if you get wet in the winter time you're going to freeze to death the wool will still keep you warm even if it's wet but one of the products that i like and that i use the most as far as wool goes is smart wool it's more expensive but like anything else you get what you pay for so those are some of the important things you need to have in your in your toolbox along with your food storage and and your ammunition and 
weapons and whatnot. That's really good to know. That's something I had never thought of. Boots or wool? Well, wool. But, I mean, I like that you call it boots. It's one of the things that we, we had this conversation yeah, just a few weeks ago. I boots all the time. You remember when I told you that I, um, or, you remember how I used to always wear flip-flops? In the middle of winter, I didn't care. I'd wear flip-flops. Like, yeah, you always wore flip-flops. That's so stupid. My dad would give me the hardest time. He'd be like, well, what are you, you know, he'd give me a hard time. And I'd be like, what do I need shoes for? Like, I get in the car, drive, get out of the car, and go in the house. Like, I don't need shoes. It's like, that's such a naive way to think. Like, and it's like, it's such a simple little thing, but if you get stuck in the snow, if you get stuck, you know, it's like, you're screwed. Like, it's, it's not good. Well, Katie always gets after me because I always wear boots. Mm-hmm. She says, why don't, you know, why don't you have shoes? I do have a pair of shoes. I got that old beat up pair of DVS shoes that I wear to work every day. <laughs> but, I mean... I don't know, it just goes back to my background where I've been and what I've done. If the need arises, a lot a lot comes down to what you have on your feet. Your feet are one of the most invaluable tools you have, and you need to take care of them. And boots are going to be the best at that. I would, I would suggest looking at Danners. Um, Danners and Bellevilles are my go to but there's there's a lot of good boot people out there solomon merrill uh is the other one that i'm thinking of the other one that i'm thinking of (laughs) but get get good quality boots go get good quality boots fred we should go shopping for some boots for you Man shopping. Man shopping. Man shopping. Man shopping. It's not gay. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of gay. A little gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I bought these boots before I went to D.C. 150 bucks. And they are... I've worn them all year. <clears throat> I've beat the hell out of them, kind of. And they're still... They're in, looking in good shape. They are. They're in great shape. I'm about to get replace these. You should get a pair of Danners. You know, I will look into them now. We'll go to Smith and Edwards. If, if you hadn't have mentioned this, I probably would have put off getting these until I started working more in the fields that are that we're looking at. But um, that will get me thinking more. What do you want to Smith and Edwards? What? Nothing. It's we... not gay if it's Smith and Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> the more manlier store there's never been. <laughs> They have everything. They have tools. They have boots. They've got guns. They've got surplus. This is turning into a commercial. Well, back to our sponsors. <laughs> Someone tell. We are in no way, shape, or form affiliated with Smith they, and Edwards. They won't claim us, but we we uh, patron their uh, establishment. Yeah, we do not patron it. What is it called? Patronize. Patronize. I don't know. I'm stupid. Why are you asking me? Uh, there's, there was a word. You tell there's... us, college boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, there was a word that I learned in Romanian. I'm frequent. How do you say that? We frequent their establishment. Yeah, we frequent their establishment. That sounds so weird to me in English, and that's that's the one that came to mind. Frequent. You've been speaking English your entire life. I'm still not good at it. Oh, dude. So um, my daughter, she she came home from school and she had, what was the word? Took her. Uh, uh, Take uh, so it would have been taken, and took it. T- so she got the the past participle mixed up. So it was like took her, uh, check uh, took her, and she was she argued with my mom like she it was on a paper that she had turned in for homework, didn't get it marked wrong, and my my wife read it. And English isn't her native language and stuff, but she read that. And it's like that word is totally wrong, and and my daughter she was like arguing with her. You're like no, it's fine. It's a regular word, and and she I came out and and she's like. Tell her this word's not wrong, and I was like, "That's the stupidest word." You <laughs> and it, it was one of those things. Where I was like, I turned to my wife. I was like, "Hun, this is the this is the the strongest case that we've seen yet. Well, one of the stronger cases we've seen for homeschooling our kids because <laughs> uh, he, like, he 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 did headed he did mystic he did mystic 
Hedona, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Words are weird. Yeah. Anyway. Should be- probably wrap this up before yeah. it gets any weirder. <laughs> We've gone some, down some weird paths. Be good to people. <laughs> treat people well. Don't don't be a fool. Don't be a sucker. Don't be don't let don't just give people the benefit of the doubt. Don't be without, afraid to say no. Without a reason. Don't be afraid to say no. But also don't 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 anticipate people being malicious or I mean it's 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 a fine balance that you have to find. But you don't want to you don't want to be a cynic, but you also don't want to be um, taken for taken advantage of. Go team. Yep, go team. That was kind of awkward. Do we do we like hands in? Or? No, the entire thing was kind of awkward. Yeah, it was a weird one today. Yeah. And then I almost died. That was awesome. Okay. That was so cool. When you fell down to your knees. <clears throat> I was like, hey, hell yeah, it's about to happen. <laughs>